Hello, computer science students. Welcome back to our object video series. Um, we're finishing up array lists here, talking about a couple of advanced things you can do with array lists, making sure that you guys are comfortable with looping and solving problems. So, um, so let's take a look at it. Um, so to dive in, we're starting with the code we had from our last video, except I've added the Phoenix as a player as well. Um, so I now have Ryan Matfeld, Connie Book, and the Phoenix as players. We're going to talk a little bit more about the differences between, oops, um, the maybe advantages and disadvantages of creating a player object and then adding it versus just adding a player object. Um, and we'll talk about kind of you know using loops to solve this. So let's start with this diving a little bit more deeply into this issue. Um, so when with when you're working with an array list, you're always going to be able to reference whatever object you put into the array list by using something like get zero to get the object at index zero. Um, but there, you know there's there's times when you want to be able to access an object outside of the array list. So um, in line ten here, once I create the player Ryan Matfeld and add it into my list like I did here. The only way to access this Ryan Matfeld player is to start by typing my list.get zero or get whatever index it is that my player is stored in. Um, so that's it. That's the only way to get to get access to this object. In the second version, line 12 and 13 here, I create a new object called Connie Book, a new player called Connie Book, um, and I create a variable called player one that points to that object. And then, then I add the object pointed to by player one to my list. So from here on out in my code, I can do player one, let's do this. Um, let's comment out everything below here and uncomment as we go. Um, I can do an S, a system out of the print line of player one dot get I don't know. Um, I can I can access my original player using player one dot get height, and I can access the same player by doing play. Uh, let's see, my list dot get one dot get height. These two things are now um, both referencing the same object. We are getting Connie Book's height, and we are getting Connie Book's height. So if I were to do something like player one dot set height, um, let's say we changed her height to sixty eight inches. I don't know. Um, then both of these, and this is an important part about objects, an important feature of objects. The heights of both of these objects are updated. Because both player one dot get height and my list dot get one dot get height are really pointing to the same object, the object that was created right here with the new keyword in line twelve. So, so here's the advantages and disadvantages. Um, an advantage of creating an object and having a variable point to it, and then adding in the object from that variable or using that variable. Uh, and advantages, there's now two ways to reference the object. We can now, you know, depending on what we want to do, whether it's in a loop or whether it's like maybe this is a special player that needs something special to happen later, um, we can reference player one instead of having to remember that they're at index one or, or something, right? There's, there's two different ways to reference it, so we can choose whatever way we want to. Um, we can give them a special name. We could call that like boss. Uh, like maybe this is a boss and that's a new player and we can reference boss later. I don't know. Um, it depends on your application, but it gives you options. That's the important part. This gives you this now gives you options. All right. So what's the downside? Well, it is a heck of a lot more cluttered. Um, we now have two things. We, know, we, we well, one we have to remember two. We have to remember there's two ways to reference this player. Um, if we ever want to, you know, if we ever do a player one dot set height, we have to remember that that's also going to change my list dot get one's height right so now it, there's some potential confusion here 
if you're looking through big complicated code and you're looking for every time that the height of player one changes, um, if you search for player one, you might miss it because we might have mylist.get1.set height. Um, so it can get a little bit complicated. Um, so long story short, um, most of the time we want to avoid complication and most of the time we want to just add the new player into the list and access it uh, directly from the list to avoid any confusion or complication somebody changing player one versus somebody changing the list at index one um, in general having only one way to access objects is probably a good rule um, unless the situation calls for it um, you know unless you do really want your boss character to be able to be referenced in a different way or a quicker or easier way. Um, so it depends on the application, but general rule of thumb, let's just create one, one reference to our object. In this case, the one reference comes through the array list. Okay, so we've delved into that topic. So the next thing is how do we loop? Um, so let's, let's go quickly into it. For int i equals zero, I less than my list dot size, right? Array list is size, and I plus plus. We want to loop through our entire array list, um, and real quickly, let's just do something simple like um, system dot dot print line get num apples. But get num apples on what? Well, each player in the list. That means we'll probably need to do my list dot get i dot get num apples. So the array version of this, you want to loop through each element in the array. You set a loop to go from zero to the to the length of the array, and then you would do array at index i, and then do something with it. Um, well, we're doing the same thing here. We're looping through each element of our array list. We are getting the player at index i, and from that player we are getting their number of apples. Um, so let's run this real quick. Um, oh, I forgot to get rid of my um, the end of my uh, block comment. All right, here we go. So um, we're adding players, and then we're printing their number of apples. So all the players start with six point eight apples because that is what the constructor initializes them to. So um, we've printed out the number of apples of all these things. Um, we can then do something like my list dot get one dot uh, let's do eat apples. And let's eat, let's say that player at index one eats mm, 3.4 apples. Okay, so first question, which player ate those apples? Was it Ryan Matfeld, Connie Book, or the Phoenix? Well, index one, index zero is gonna be Ryan Matfeld, index one is Connie Book, and index two is the Phoenix. So this is Connie Book eating apples. Um, let's say that we want the Phoenix to eat apples. That means we need to use index two. And let's say the Phoenix eats 1.2 apples. All right, well now, uh, if we loop through, let me get rid of some of these comments that are not misleading. Um, now if we loop through our array list, the first time through, we went through all three elements, printed out 6.8 apples each, and now we're looping through all the elements and printing the apples again. I still have not eaten any apples, so I have 6.8. Connie book is down to 3.4 and the Phoenix is at 5.6. Um, and just to make it a little more clear, we could, we could do something like add an empty print statement here. Um, and that would give us a little space between our first printout and our second printout. So the idea here is our list holds objects, points to these objects, so that when we get an item from our list, we can then call methods on the objects stored at those indices. Um, so we can access uh, index zero to play with the Ryan Matfeld player. 
Um, index 1 to access Kanye Book Player, Index 2 to access the Phoenix. Um, and so as we work with objects, it's important, and array lists, it's important to keep track of what are you calling a method on? Well, my list is an array list, so I need to call an array list method on it. Well, it's called a get method. Once I get an item from my array list, well, what type of item, what type of object did I get? Well, the array list holds players, so I got a player out of it. So now I need to look at my player methods to figure out what methods are available. Um, and as you go through each of these steps, you should see, if you're using Eclipse, a nice little pop-up. Um, and it will talk about, it will indicate which class the method comes from. Here's the get height method from the player class, the get name, getting them apples. Um, and then there's actually classes that you inherit from called, a class that you inherit from called object. But we're going to talk about that in much more detail later. Um, what I wanted to highlight is from this, you can see all the methods that you might want to use and the types of inputs that the methods want, and also the return type. Um, so let's see, my list, uh, let's see, get name returns a string, get num apples returns a double, right? So you can figure out all this information from the pop-up pretty quickly. So hopefully working with array lists makes sense. It should remind you a lot of working with arrays. There's a couple little tweaks. Method names are different. Instead of square brackets, you have a get. Um, and then the, the other big thing is that when you get something from an array list, you are getting an object. And so you can call a method on that object. Um, so hopefully all that makes sense. Hopefully this is starting to come together. Um, and you guys can please feel free to come to class with any questions you may have. Talk to you guys later.